tier list. Tier list. Did you know that warlocks have exotic armor? Well, we're gonna be ranking that exotic armor based on viability. Wow. In PvE and PvP. Wow. Yeah, that's about it. Let's hop right in. I would also like to say I have 5,000 hours in this game and about a third of it has been on warlock. So I, I think I know I know what I'm talking about just a little bit. Just let's get into it. Let's get into it, bro. Geo mag stabilizers. Now I'm gonna be honest, bro. Geo mags used to be absolutely nasty. You know what I'm talking about? When you used to be able to just run in PvP and you would just get your super just for running. If you guys don't know, if your super was three quarters of the way charged, you could just do a little bit of sprinting and then the last bar would completely fill up in like two seconds. It was broken, so they got rid of that. Nowadays, Geo mags they only make your chaos reach last longer. But you need to land every single hit to get the most value. So you're really going to want to use that on bosses that are pretty stationary. Guys, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. It's kind of mid. It's kind of mid. It's kind of mid. I'm giving it a B tier. It's mid. It's, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. It's mid. It's mid. Raviton Forfeit? Is that even what it's called? It doesn't matter, bro. You know what I'm talking about. The Blink Exotic. Let's be honest. It's mid, bro. It's mid. Like, uh, we're not gonna be honest. Like, we're just gonna hop right into it. It's mid. Because this is the thing. You're not trying to use that. Like, okay, where would you use this? PvP? You would use it in PvP? It's not that good. It's not that good. You would much rather use Ophidian Aspect. Stag. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, Controverse Hold. Karnstein Armlets. Like, bro, you're not really gonna be using it. Yes, it is fun. It is fun. I might have to drop it to C tier, bro. Because you're really not... There's really no reason to use it. Now, what it does is... It extends the length of your blink. So, it makes you blink farther. It gives you airborne effectiveness for every single gun. Period. Which is nice. It is nice because you're going to be in the air because you're blinking. Bro, it's just a fun exotic. It's not, it's not really that good. What it needs to do is... Your weapons are ready immediately after blinking. Like, that would be broken, bro. That would be broken. That'd be way too much. Just a little bit less than that. It needs a buff, bro. It's C tier. It's C tier. I don't want to hear it. Sun Bracers? You're like, why is he jumping? Bro, it's my video, bro. I can go to whichever one I want to. Get off me, bro. Get off me. Sun Bracers? S tier. No, I lied. They're A tier. Hear me out. Hear me out. I know I'm going to get hate for this. I know I'm going to get hate. Because we all know Starfire Protocol has been nerfed. And Sunbracers are here to replace them. But bro, let's be honest about Sunbracers. Ah, you need a melee kill. How often are you getting melee kills? How often are you getting them? Not that often, bro. You're not getting melee kills. Stop. 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 You're not getting melee kills. Like, okay, in a GM, you go for a melee kill, but everything has too much health, bro. So, you're just not getting the melee kill. I don't know how else to say it. You can get a target low and then shoot your melee, but you don't know how much damage the melee deals. Let's be honest, Warlock melees are weak. They're weak, bro. So you don't know how much damage you need to deal. Like, up until their finisher, that should be enough. But, bro, like, I don't know, man. It's... I gave them A2. That's not that bad. That's not that bad. Get off me, bro. Controverse hold! S tier. That's one of the best exotics in the game, period, bro. You just get so much ability energy with your void grenades, and void grenades are absolutely amazing because you can charge them up, throw them. It just does amazing damage, bro. It does amazing damage, causes weaken. There's not much to say, bro. It's just a good exotic. It's a good exotic. Don Chorus? Bro, Don Chorus is garbage. Like, I don't want to hear anyone in the comments telling me I'm wrong. Don Chorus is absolute. Bro, I don't want to get demonetized. It's bad, though. It's bad, though. Let's be honest, okay? What does Dawn Chorus do? It, it, it makes your Scorch effects stronger, similar to that one Ember, that one Fragment. It just, it just makes your Scorch effects stronger, which is cool, but let's be honest. Damage over time is not that strong in this game, so you're not really going for a Scorch build. You know, the only good damage over time is Necrotic Grip Osteo Striga. But really, the reason you're using this is to get those ignitions off. And what are you going to use? You're going to use that one scout rifle that I can't even think of the, think of the name? You're going to use that? Like, that's really what Dawn Chorus wants to use. You're going to use Skyburner's Oath? Are you? Are you really using Skyburner's Oath just to use Dawn Chorus? No, you're not using it. You're not using it. Now, let's be honest. They did just recently buff it. What they did was they made it so the Daybreak projectiles do more damage regardless of if 
the enemy is scorched or not, but bro, it's it's not good enough. It's not enough. So I'm sorry, but it's D tier. It's D tier. I'm sorry. You can use it, but it's D tier. You need to accept the facts. Get away, artist! Now that might be a hot take. That might be a hot take. No one really uses getaway artists. But let's be honest with ourselves. Why not? Why not? Bro. In PvP. Okay, let's talk about PvP. They're nasty. They're nasty. They do more damage than any kill clip or whatever damage buff will do for you. Okay? With getaway artists, you can two-tap with a hand cannon. Because of your turret just doing so much damage and they're supercharged. Bro, I don't know why they're not meta. They're absolutely disgusting. On top of that, Arc Warlock does have that slide melee, which we all know can one-shot sometimes. I don't know why getaway artists are not meta. They're quite good. Give them a try. I'm not doing less than A tier, man. Infinite turrets? Come on, bro. You literally have infinite turrets in PvP with getaway artists. Please use them so they can... I don't want them to get nerfed, but... Maybe, you know what, maybe don't use them. I'll just use them. Don't use them. Don't use them. Matter of fact, they're D tier. Don't use them, they're bad. Forget everything I just said. The stag? The stag, though? The stag? A tier, bro. Above, above getaway artists, because let's be honest, getaway artists, you're not really using that in PvE. You have much better arc warlock exotics for PvE the stag, though, you can use that in PvP and PvE. I don't know why the stag has fallen off in the way that it has. It was quite meta in PvP for a while there. And if you don't know, what the stag does is you're sitting in your healing rift, right? Okay? And you get times to resist. That's like 50% damage reduction. Why? You're also in a healing rift, so you're healing. The stag is absolutely amazing. And the thing about it is it's not subclass specific. I would put it above Sun Bracers, but I know I would get hate for that. I would get hate. I would get hate. I don't want hate. I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm probably going to get hate anyways. But, I, listen. The stag is quite good. It's A tier. What else? Bro, come on, bro. What else do you want me to say about it? Bell Winter's Helm? Nobody has ever used Fell Winter's Helm in their life. A pop... A pop... Nobody has ever used either of these in their life. I don't even know what they do, bro. I don't even know what they do. When I first started this game in 2019, okay, I went and I read every single exotic and I was like, oh, that, I can't wait to get that one. Oh, that looks interesting. These two, I read them and I just decided on the spot, you know what, I'm never going to use that. So you know what, let's give them a fair chance. Let's test them out. Let's see what they do and maybe we'll shift our rankings a little bit. I'm not going to shift them though, they're terrible. Immediately regenerate health, melee, grenade, and when active- Bro. Why would I need to do that after using my super? Bro, all of the builds nowadays, you already have infinite grenades, melee, rift energy. If you look at my Arc Warlock build, we have infinite abilities. Why would I want to immediately regenerate them when using my super? Okay? I would much rather get- 25% damage buff after my super end. Like my Eternal Warrior build that I dropped two days ago. Like, why would I use this? This is D tier. This is absolute garbage, okay? So that's staying. Let's take a look at Fell Winter's Helm. Howard Melee Final Blows create a burst of weakened energy, okay? Finish your final blows against more powerful targets, increase the radius. So basically, you have yourself a bit of an infinite weakened build. If you pair it with like Monte Carlo or something, okay, you know what? And I did have a comment recently telling me that Fell Winters, it's not that bad, it's not that bad. So, you know, I'm gonna give it a C tier. I'm gonna give it a C tier because that does seem like if you build into it, it won't be that bad. It won't be that bad. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna move it up. I'm gonna move it up. I'm gonna be humble here. I'm not always correct. I'm not always correct. Transversive steps? Bro, why have Transverse and Steps fallen out of the meta? Why? They- Okay, Transversives and Aphidians used to be one-to-one. -one. You would see both of them equally. Why have they fallen out of the meta? They instantly reload your gun when you're running. You're running all the time in- This is a PvP exotic. You're running all the time in PvP, right? You're rotating lanes. You're trying to run up on the enemy in the- Like, when the round starts, stuff like that. You're always running, okay? Um... 
and it also gives you a speed increase. Now, that is always amazing because, again, at the beginning of a round, if you are the first to the lane, you're going to get the snipe off first. You know, if you're trying to run away, no one can chase you. That's why stoppies have been so dominant. Those two reasons. There's other reasons with the jump and everything. But transversives, they are quite good. Are they better than the stag? I might have to, I might have to move them down, bro. I might have to, I don't think they're better than the stag. I don't think they're better than the stag. Someone let me know. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? Let me know. That's where they're sitting right now. Phoenix Protocol? Bro, like, how come I don't see more Phoenix Protocol? Now, I, in my recent video talking about why Hunters are the best class in the game, I was hating on Dawnblade a little bit, you know, Solar Warlocks, you know, their, their neutral game's kind of mid. But with Phoenix Protocol, you have a solid argument for saying, you know, they're not in their neutral game that much. They pretty much always have their Well of Radiance up. That's how it kind of used to be. You know, Well of Radiance, you used to basically have it infinitely with this exotic because what this exotic does, if you don't know, when you're standing in your Well of Radiance, when you get kills, it gives you a ton of super energy back. And it used to be able to fully regenerate your super energy. Now it's capped at 50%, but that is still quite substantial. And, you know, if you're if you're dealing out the damage with your Wish Ender or whatever, that other 50%, you're going to get it back pretty damn fast. So, with this exotic, you probably have your super up every just like two minutes. So, that is pretty damn good. And we all know how powerful Well of Radiance is. So, with these factors in mind, I'm going to have to put it in S tier, man. I mean, you never... <laughs> there's not a single world where you wouldn't benefit from having a Well of Radiance on your team. There's not a single world. There's not a single one. And this one lets you spam well. I, I don't know what else to say. It's S tier. It's S tier. If you think I'm wrong, you're wrong. You're wrong plus ratio. It's S tier. Harn Steam Armlets? Bro. I'm gonna have to put it in B tier, okay? Because hear me out. If you think these are trash, you're just wrong, first of all. First of all, if you think they're bad, you're just incorrect, okay? When you get a melee kill, PvP, we're talking about PvP here. When you get a melee kill, we can talk about PvE too, but we're going to start with PvP. When you get a melee kill, you get all of your health back, okay? What does that mean? Shotgun melee? Shotgun melee? You shotgun, and then you melee, and all of your health is back similar to Arc Titan, okay? That is absolutely amazing. It, it lets you just ape a team and just fully get your health back so that you can start dealing with the second person okay that is absolutely amazing in pvp for so many different situations getting your health back after a melee kill you're you're always meleeing someone in pvp right also this opens up the opportunity for some glaive builds in pve so honestly i i kind of want to move it up but it's 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 situational enough to the point where i don't want to but you know, it's going to be a strong B tier. Karnstein armlets are very, very strong. They're strong. They're strong. Get off me. Sanguine alchemy? <laughs> if you don't think Sanguine alchemy is the best warlock exotic, then you haven't watched my arc warlock build, bro. With Sanguine alchemy in season 21, it has been buffed, okay? When you are standing in your healing rift, you have a 17% damage bonus to any weapon matching your subclass. Now, this season with Arc and all of the Arc artifact perks, it becomes absolutely busted because you have the 17% damage boost. You're sitting in a healing rift. I forgot to mention another part. When you get kills, okay, it gives you this effect called blood magic, which pauses the countdown of your rift. Okay, so basically, if there's infinite adds, you have infinite rift, which gives you infinite damage boost, infinite healing, plus you're amplified, so you have 25% damage resistance. Guys, Sanguine Alchemy is so damn strong, specifically this season with Arc. Go watch the Arc build. Go watch it. It's the best Warlock build in the game right now this season. Guys, Sanguine Alchemy's S tier. If you think I'm wrong, Go watch the build video. If you still think I'm wrong, go use the build, and then you will realize that you were wrong the whole time. This is a good thing. It's okay to learn. It's okay to learn. Don't be upset about it. Give it a try, bro. Give it a try. It's really good. Like, seriously, in all seriousness, though, this exotic is so damn good. Please try it. <laughs> like, Osteo Strict Necrotic Grip? Okay, I just said Sanguine Alchemy is the best exotic in the game. 
But let's be honest. You can't really compete with Necrotic Grip. Can you? I don't know. We have some contenders. You can't really compete with Necrotic Grip, bro. This combined with Osteostriga is just absolutely disgusting. The build synergy from just those two exotics alone, it just melts every activity in the game. Lost Sectors, you guys know I like to post my Lost Sector guides. It just melts every single Lost Sector in the game. You don't even need a build. You just need those two exotics alone. And this, you know, now that we have Strand, it's even stronger than it was. Guys, there's not really much to say. The ad clear potential with this, the damage that it does, just ridiculous, ridiculous stuff. If you guys don't know, basically, if you kill an ad, there's a poison explosion from Necrotic Grip that does the same amount of damage as the ad's health that you just killed. So if you kill a Scion, right, there's an explosion, and then if there's a Scion right next to that Scion, that Scion is, the second Scion is also dead. It does so much damage. It is the most powerful damage over time effect in the game, which is ridiculous, by the way. Why is Scorch not stronger? Why is Scorch just, you know, you only apply Scorch to get the ignition. I wish the Scorch burn damage itself was powerful. You know, that would make Solar's kit a little more interesting to me. I like damage over time. I wish damage over time was strong in this game. But anyways, very powerful exotic Probably the best Warlock Exotic. We're going to keep going, and we're going to see if anything passes it, but I doubt it. I doubt it, bro. Eye of another world? I'm going to give it a B tier. I'm going to give it a B tier, because what this does is... Bro, ability spam is so damn strong in this game, and this just... It just lowers the cooldown of every single ability, except for supers, I believe. Before Osmio Mancy Gloves existed, this is what you would use to have the fastest turret cooldown so damn powerful you know it and it's useful on every single subclass so that's why it's so damn high you, you guys know ability spam is so powerful in this game osmio mancy gloves bro 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 uh. we're gonna have to give it an a tier bro it's a tier i'm not gonna talk about it okay i'll talk about it guys this is good in pvp and in PvE, okay? In PvP, you are just absolutely freezing everyone. If someone is around the corner, I'm thinking about that one map. I'm really bad with map names, but you'll know what I'm talking about. It's the really small map where the doors go up and down. You know, there's mid. There's like five different entrances into mid. There's the, the bridge that goes outside from mid. You know what I'm talking about. Guys, on that map, if when, if, when you go to mid, if you are the one that's inside, if you throw your turret on the left side entrance it just freezes everything you know what i'm gonna show the map on the screen guys it just it, it's always freezing someone there and then you could just ape out with your shotgun it's absolutely hilarious i can't tell you how many freeze kills i have gotten if i have any sniper kills in this game it's because of this exotic throwing it out long range it's so much fun to freeze people with this exotic in pvp in pve though Guys, it's also absolutely disgusting because you get two charges of your cold snap grenade. You can use those to make the turrets, okay? But also, when you freeze something with your base cold snap, not turning it into a turret, when you freeze something with just a cold snap grenade, it gives you so much grenade energy back, okay? So there's this nice combination where you throw a turret, right? And then you throw your cold snap because you have two charges. You throw your second cold snap on the ground. If it freezes like four or five ads, which can't... If there's four or five ads there, they're all going to get frozen. If it freezes that many ads, you get enough energy for both of your grenades back instantly. Like, it's absolutely disgusting in PvE. Like, you're just the king of freeze. Especially if you pair it with something like Aegir Scepter, everything will be frozen absolutely disgusting exotic we all know stasis warlock is powerful in pve but it being good in pvp you know i kind of want to put it above the stag ah, yeah, ah. it's only good on stasis so i'm gonna leave it where it is but guys it's so damn powerful if you haven't used it go use it disgusting disgusting stuff balladors bro i don't know what this is called it's garbage i don't bro all it does is it boosts the damage of your shade binder super the Shade Binder Super is terrible in PvE. You're not, bro, you're, <sighs> you wouldn't want to use that. The thing about it is, okay, maybe you would want to use it because you, I just said how good Stasis Warlock is, but you wouldn't use it because you're using Osmio Mancy Gloves. This exotic, it's, okay, it's not bad, but compared to its competition, it's just, 
you would never use it, so it has to be D tier. If I'm ranking it individually, assuming Osmiomancy didn't exist, it would still be pretty bad. Let's put it above Apotheo, Apoth whatever that thing is called. We don't know what it's called because it's garbage. We're putting it above that because you're never using Apotheosis or whatever. You would maybe use this, okay? I, You see how low Dawn Chorus is. That's also an exotic that just boosts your super damage. You know, it's not really that good, man. So we're going to have to leave it in the D tier. Second Filament? It's not that bad. Is it better than this? You know what? I'm gonna put it high C tier. Now, if you don't know, what it does is you need to use your Empowering Rift, right? When you use your Empowering Rift, you get Devour, and I believe all of your weapons also stun Overload Champions. Let's check real quick. Yeah, it also gives you Intrinsic Overload on every single gun in the game, which is actually very, very interesting. Ah, uh, you know, it's not bad. I feel like this could be quite good given a good build. So I'm going to move it up to B tier. It's definitely better than Geomag Stabilizers. Because guys, you're never really using... I'm going to move Geomags down as a matter of fact. You're never really using Geomags. Let's be honest. You're not really using them, bro. Because the Arc, the other Arc Warlock subclass options are just so much better. You're never really using Geomags. You could use Second Filaments, you know, if you if you really made a strong build around them. And now I kind of want to. I kind of want to make a build for them. We'll, we'll see if we can make that work. You know, I'm thinking something with Wish Ender. We'll give it a try. We'll give it a try. Vesper of Radius? Vesper, bro. This exotic is garbage. I get so many, bro. I've said this so many times. I get so many comments telling me, Oh, it's actually meta now. It's actually quite good with the new with the new buff, bro. The buff did nothing. Stop. 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 It's bad, bro. It's not good. Okay, so what it does is when you cast your rip, it sends out this little arc shockwave that pushes enemies back and it does some damage to them, but it doesn't do that much damage, bro. If anything is that close to you, <laughs> let's talk about end game PvE. Nothing is ever going to be that close to you. You're not going to push out up, up against enemies and cast your rift. That's just stupid. You're going to die, bro. So, like, uh, it's not good, man. Okay, there is the secondary benefit where when you're surrounded by enemies, you're going to get your rift much faster. Like, it's actually very, very fast. How fast you get your rift, it's pretty damn good. But, guys, you're... Again, you don't want to be surrounded by ads in endgame PvE. So, like, this exotic is not good. I'm not going to put it... You know, it's definitely better than Balladors. You're not going to use Balladors because Osmiomancy simply outclasses it. This, it can be used on all subclasses. You don't need to be on Arc. So, you know, mm, I'll, I'll put it high D tier, okay? I'm not going to put it all the way at the end because I know there are some people that advocate for it. Luna Faction Boots! Luna Factions, though. Luna Factions. I'm gonna put them C tier. I'm gonna put them C tier because they're really fun. They're really damn cool. I'm gonna show a clip right now, but basically they give you seemingly infinite range on every single weapon if you're standing in an empowering rift. And what that means is you can literally shotgun someone across the map. Like you can be in a sniper lane and kill someone with chaperone and it is absolutely hilarious. It's not something that's really actually gonna happen. That's why it's so low. But it's a really cool exotic. I would like to see it buffed in some way. I don't know what it would be, but it's a really interesting idea. And I would like them to, I would like to see them do something with it. I really like the exotic Prometheum Spur. Bro. I'm not gonna put it below Balladors, but bro, they nerfed it. They nerfed it. So what this used to do was, okay, if your rift was fully charged and you got a kill with a solar weapon, right? It would cast an empowering rift and a healing rift at the enemy that you just killed's location. The issue is they changed it so you need to be standing in a rift in order for that kill to spawn the next rift, okay? What it also does is it gives you rift energy for those solar kills, but the issue is when you pop your rift and you start getting the solar kills, your rift will not be fully charged in time for you to spawn another rift. 
Like, they just nerfed it. They just nerfed... It's only... Like, it literally does nothing now. Its main functionality does not exist. The only thing it actually does now is give you rift energy for solar kills, which is garbage. You would just use something like the stag, which I forgot to mention. When you get low HP, you just get a bunch of rift energy. Also, when you die with the stag, it casts a rift on your body so your teammates can res you easier. Like, that is just something much better that also deals with rifts. Sanguine Alchemy is also rift-oriented. Sanguine Alchemy gives you infinite rifts and infinite everything else you could possibly want there is not a single world where you ever use prometheum spur i'm gonna put it below balladors because i'm sure there's someone out there that likes doing damage with their shade binder super but this it just does nothing it doesn't do anything it does it does nothing i'm gonna put it below apotheosis because at least apotheosis actually refunds your ability energy this does nothing it does nothing don't use it storm dancers brace is that even what it's called? Whatever, bro. You know what? Uh, yeah, uh, 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 I'm gonna put it... I'm gonna put it D... I'm gonna put it D tier because, because of the reasons we said earlier. You're not really using this when the other arc exotics are so much better, man. Now what this does, if you don't know, is when you use your Storm Trance, Basically, all the kills that you get will give you super energy up to 50% of your super back, which is nice. It does let you spam your super, but let's be honest, in endgame activities, you're going to be using Chaos Reach anyways. You know, it's not really that good, but it's not useless. You know, you could definitely have a lot of fun with it if you were running some type of super gain build, which doesn't really exist right now. We don't have any artifact mods for super gain, but down the line, you know, I feel like we will again, and this will be quite fun. And even at base, what it's doing right now, it can be quite fun if you're like in easier activity and you just want to spend your super. It's it's really fun. You know what? I'm going to put, I'm going to move Felwinter's Helm down because no one's really ever using that. And I'm going to move this above Lunafaction, because Lunafaction is cool, but again, you're not really using it. I, I like where that's sitting right now. Geomags, eh, you would use Geomags before you would use that. But, again, both of these are outclassed by Arc Exotic, so I'm gonna put, you know, Astrocyte versus, what did I call it before? Graviton, bro. I'm gonna put Astrocyte versus up here. I like, I like where everything is sitting right now. Let's continue. Crown of Tempests? Bro, uh, uh, okay, it's definitely better than these. We're gonna put it, uh, uh, we're gonna put it high B tier. We're gonna put it high B tier because here's the thing about Crown of Tempests. It was the original Fallen Sunstar, right? What it does is it lets you spam your arc abilities, which is really nice. It's nice, bro, it's nice. The issue is Fallen Sunstar does the same thing except better, right? So what Crown of Tempest does is you get like this buff on the left side, you know where the buffs are, where when you get arc abilities you have increased ability regen, but what Fallen Sunstar does is it's just better. I'm going to put it in A tier by the way. Fallen Sunstar, it makes it so Ionic Traces give you a ton of ability energy back, and it's more ability energy than Crown of Tempest. Now the trade-off is Crown of Tempest's also buffs your storm trance super which is another reason why it outclasses storm dancers brace so much so basically what it does is once you have max stacks of conduction times which is three it takes three ability kills to get there once you're at max stacks of this your storm trance super will last much longer the issue is back before arc 3.0 existed you know we had the old class layout there was another ability which extended the duration of your storm trance and those stacked and your storm trance would last like 45 seconds up to a minute like it was disgusting that has been removed from the game with arc 3.0 so that inadvertently has nerfed crown of tempests now on top of that with fallen sunstar being so much better than crown of tempests you know there's really no reason to use it over Crown of Tempest. So guys, I'm gonna be honest, I'm gonna move this up a little bit because you're not really using Getaway Artists or Transversive Steps too much. You know, Fallen Sunstar, it's just a staple on all Arc Warlock builds. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put it where it is right now. I like that. I like that. A Fidian aspect? Bro. Uh, I'm gonna put it high C tier, okay? Because okay, a Fidian aspect has been nerfed. It's been nerfed. It's been nerfed, and it was a bad nerf. 
I mean, it was a good nerf, but it was a hard nerf. So what it used to do was it used to give you some crazy melee lunge range, okay? And on top of that, it gave you insane handling, and those two combined made Warlocks... Don't quote me on this, but in my opinion, they were the strongest shotgun class in the game because they could just switch to their shotguns so damn fast. And on top of that, you know shotguns, they don't always one-shot, they usually don't. So when you're using a shotgun, you shotgun melee. It gave them the best melee lunge range in the game. And on top of that, they just switched their shotguns the fastest. So the, the combination of that made them the best shotgun class in the game. Nowadays, it does still give you the handling buff, but no more melee lunge range. So... You know, ah, uh, I'm looking at Eye of Another World. I kind of want to move this down. Maybe it's better than Eye of Another World. Because you do still switch to your shotgun pretty damn fast. Yeah, I like where that's sitting. You guys let me know what you think. This is really damn even. We almost have the e an equal amount. Like, if I moved this up here, we'd have an equal amount in each tier. This is, you know, this is better than I expected. Laws of Ahamkara? Bro, they're not that good. I love Claws of Ahamkar, bro, but yeah, they're definitely better than these. I'm going to put them over. No one's really using Felwinters. They're only there as consolation because I know people are going to hate. I know some people use it. Claws of Ahamkar, no one's really using it, but I use it, bro. It's my guide. It's my tier list. It's my tier list. Bro, I like... I. I have nostalgia with this exotic from back in the day because when Shadebinder first dropped, that's around when I started playing, when Stasis dropped, what I would do is I would use the melee and I would have two charges of it and it was so sick because the melee had more range and it was faster, so I would just freeze everyone and they'd be frozen for like 5 seconds. It was so broken and a new player like me, it was helping me get some kills, so I have nostalgia for that. You know, additionally, they did buff it, so nowadays, if you get a melee kill on a different subclass, because obviously the freeze melee can't kill, or it can, but it doesn't do much damage, um, it creates an orb of power, and you can stack that with the heavy-handed. So basically, it has intrinsic heavy-handed, but you can then go put three more heavy-handed, which would give you a total of four heavy-handed mods on this, and that does give you some super energy, so it's not, it's not terrible on a melee build, but... Warlock melee builds don't really exist, so yeah, I'm not going to put it too high, but I have nostalgia with it, so it's going to be, you know, low C tier. I'm not putting it in D, bro. Get off me. Starfire Protocol? Bro, they absolutely gutted my boy. What did they do to my boy? Absolute garbage now. It's better than Felwinter's. Eh, is it? Yeah, it kind of is. Okay, so if you don't know, Starfire Protocol used to give you 20% grenade cooldown back for every instance of damage you did. You would pair this with Wither Horde, which did that damage over time, and essentially you would just have infinite grenades. Now you needed to be standing in your empowering rift to get that grenade energy, but your Well of Radiance also counted. I don't know why I'm explaining this. If you're watching this video, you probably know how good Starfire Protocol was, but it has been nerfed. It went from 20% down to, I believe, 2%. Don't quote me on that, but I believe it's 2 or 2.5%. Anyways, it's absolutely garbage now. The only real use is it does give you two charges of your fusion grenades, which is why it's above all the other exotics, you know? It's at least doing something. Like, two charges of a grenade, that's not bad. It's pretty damn good. Speaking of two charges of your grenade, nothing manacles! Bro, now, nothing manacles are not bad. If you don't know, what it does is it gives you two charges of your scatter grenades and it gives them better tracking, meaning that they're going to do more damage overall. The main issue is that, bro, you would much rather use Controverse Hold. That's the whole issue. It doesn't give you grenade energy back for getting kills. If it did, it would be absolutely insane. It would be fantastic. But guys, it's not doing that. So for that reason, I'm going to have to give it you know, a high B tier, and the only reason it's that high is just because I think it's cool. I, I just think scatter grenades are very cool, and I think down the line, whenever we get a different artifact perk for Void that buffs grenade cooldown, similar to Lightning Strikes Twice, if we had Lightning Strikes Twice except Void, this would be absolutely amazing, so I'm going to put them where they are just because I think it's cool, and I think down the line with some synergy, it could be very powerful. But let me know what you guys think about that. I know it's a, it's a bit higher than it should be, but I like them. Get off me, bro. It's my list. It's my list, bro. Aeon, whatever. Now, I say whatever because all of them have different names for each class. I think this one's Aeon Soul, but I don't know, bro. I don't know. I'm going to have to put it... Uh, I'm going to... Uh, yeah. 
I'm gonna have to put it low C tier because let's be honest, nobody's running Aeon Soul. Nobody wants to run that, bro. What it does is it gives you heavy ammo for when you finish a super, but you don't get the heavy. You don't get it, bro. You don't get it. Your teammates get heavy. So nobody really wants to do that. Now, in an ideal world, all three of you are running Aeon and you just get infinite heavy. But the thing is, instead of doing that, you can just run Cenotaph, which, as you can see, is the only exotic I don't own. But guys, first of all, this is S tier. I'm not going to put it above Sanguine. Uh, I'm just going to put it low S tier because this gives you this gives the entire team heavy when you debuff an enemy with a trace rifle which this season trace rifles are doing that overload damage they are stunning those overload champions you can use divinity for even more support but if a three stack runs this you guys will literally have infinite heavy and it doesn't require you to finish the champion so you don't need to you know go and risk your life like if we're talking about aeon the only class that should be running aeon is hunter because they have invisibility and you can use proximity ward along with invisible finishers and the combination of that will give you very very safe finishers whereas warlock you don't really have the safest finishers in the game you're not really going to want to be going for that cenotaph though it lets you hold that range and i don't know if you guys have seen but there's someone who like like did a GM in like four minutes because their stack, their three stack, it was Devil's Lair. Their three stack was just spamming Gallahorn the entire damn nightfall because they had infinite heavy. If three people are running Cenotaph, it is absolutely disgusting. Now, I'm not going to put it high S tier because for it to really reach that full capability, you do need a dedicated team. All three of you don't need to be running it, but you need to have some synergy there. Your teammates need to be know what's going on. They need to be able to abuse it. There needs to be some communication, whereas the other exotics are just good without a team knowing what's going on. You know what I'm saying there? So that's why it is where it is. Winter's Guile? Bro, this exotic is garbage. It's... Okay. Okay, this is an overreaction. It's definitely not D tier. It's definitely not... Okay, we've established it's not below these two, right? It's not... Okay. Let me talk about what it does before I place it somewhere. What this does is when you get a melee kill, you get additional melee energy. Bro, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. No one cares. So, I don't even know what people did with this before glaives existed. But basically, this lets you do a nice glaive build, I guess. The issue is you would much rather use Karnsteins. Karnsteins heal you after melee kills, okay? Or you would use Necrotic Grip for insane ad clear, because if you don't know, melee kills also proc that poison explosion that we were talking about earlier. It's not just Necrotic Grip, it's melee kills. So if we're talking about a Glaive build, you would much rather use Necrotic or Karnstein. I don't know, man. You're just not using this. It kind of is trash. I think I'm going to put it... Ah, you're definitely going to use it before Balladors, but I'm going to have to put it right where it is. Nezarex Sin? Uh, I don't know, man. Where should this go? I'm gonna put it above Transversive Steps because you don't really see Transversive Steps too much nowadays. What Nezarex Sin does is when you get Void Damage Kills, you get a lot of Ability Energy back, which is pretty clean. Now, the thing about it is, it's a universal exotic. You don't need to be on a void subclass, you just need weapon kills. So, back in the day, what I used to do is, there is a stasis fragment that gives you increased super energy when defeating frozen targets, okay? So what I used to do was, I would freeze an enemy, and then I would get a void shotgun kill with a, with a thresh shotgun. So I had three different buffs going on, all giving me super energy and I would get supers in like two minutes that was one of the first builds I made in this game and it it was just so fun so I can't in good faith put it any lower than that I haven't used them probably within like the last year I haven't used them too much because each subclass has their own unique exotic that gives them insane ability uptime so there's not really a purpose in these anymore in my opinion but I know a lot of people swear by them I know there's a lot of people that use them in the polls I've seen you know people just swearing how good they are so I am gonna put them a tier because you know you guys love them and also they're nostalgic for me so that's why they are where they are skull of dire ahamkara bro this is garbage it's garbage okay you would use it uh 
you would use it before Balladorus, you'd use it before Winter's Guile. I'm gonna put it high D tier because at least it kind of does what it says it's gonna do, but it doesn't do that much. So basically, if you get Nova Bomb kills, and I think it applies on hits too, I could be wrong, but basically you get your super energy back, but you don't get that much. I, I believe the most I've ever gotten was a third of my Nova Bomb back. It's just not that powerful, guys. It's not that good. You could do like a, a funny little build where you know you use Controverse and you use Ashes to Assets to get your super back, and then you switch to Skull of Dire Ahamkara for your Nova Bomb, but you can't do that in endgame activities. This is more of a you know for fun, you know, new to the game, just trying to have fun with the super type of exotic, you know. And I don't mean any hate, but personally, it's just not that good, so. That is why it is where it is. I don't know what to tell you. It's not that good. Stop. Chromatic Fire? Bro, I've had so many people, because I hated on it, because it got buffed recently, and I did a tier list video on all of the exotics that got buffed from each class. I did rate it pretty low, but people were saying it is quite decent with Wish Ender because it has that ad clear. But I don't know, man. If we're talking about Wish Ender, then we're talking about Endgame. And if we're talking about Endgame, there are much better exotics to run in Endgame. So I don't know, bro. Uh, is it better than... No, I don't even think it's better than Eye of Another World. Okay, first of all, let me move Ophidian Aspect down. It's not that good anymore, okay? Nothing Manacles. Ah, uh, I'm gonna put it, you know, low B tier. I would put it lower, but I know that you guys like it, so I'm gonna put it right where it's at right now. I think that's okay. I think that's okay. Wings of Sacred Dawn? Bro, this exotic is garbage. It's really bad. What it does is when Dawnblade is equipped, aiming weapons while your mid-air suspends you there for a short time, which gives you resist and like some weapon buffs. Weapon hits extend this duration and you get an airborne effectiveness buff. Guys, first of all, this exotic is just absolutely hideous. Like if you're trying to have some drip, you just have these ugly wings behind you. I'm gonna get some hate for that. I know a lot of people love how this looks, but I don't. It's kind of soft, bro. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to wear some fairy wings, man. That's not me. That that's not me, that's not me. So, I don't know. Um, it's ugly, first of all, but its effect is also just hideous, okay? It gives you damage resist, but you're sitting in the middle of the air, so you're taking a bunch of damage anyways. It needs to give you way more damage resist for that actually to be beneficial. It needs to give you a damage buff when you're in the air. It does none of those things, guys. If you're using this exotic, you're just asking to take more damage. Like, okay, there's no cover in the air. I don't really see why you would use this. But, there's no but. It's absolutely terrible. Is it worse than- okay, it, it does something. At least it does something. Balladors. Ah, I'm gonna put it lower than Balladors, bro. Let me know, that might be a hot take. I don't think it is. I think everyone hates this. It's not good. Moving on, Mantle of Battle Harmony? Bro, I'm gonna be honest, I have been talking for 48 minutes straight. I don't know how long this video is, my throat is so hoarse. I'm gonna drink some water. Where's my water, bro? I'm gonna get some water, bro. Mantle of Battle Harmony? It's not that good, bro. It's not that good. I'm gonna have to give it... I'm gonna give it a low B tier because, okay, here's what it does. It lets you regenerate your super back much faster if you are using a weapon that matches your subclass type. And there is a build with Aegir Scepter that I'll get into into a second, but its second ability is when your super is fully charged, you get a times a tier 4 damage buff, which is 25%. Doesn't stack with surge mods anymore, so that kind of sucks, but it's not a bad damage buff. The issue is, guys, it is such a situational exotic. You know, you have to sit on your super, first of all. Second of all, it's only good after your super is charged, where there's other, you know, damage buffing exotics like Eternal Warrior, which again, I just dropped the build for. Go check that out. It's absolutely disgusting. There's also Path of Burning Steps. You know, even Mask of Backers, where you're constantly having that damage buff. This one is just too situational, and it makes you not want to use your super. It's kind of bad, guys. You know, but at least it does it does give you a substantial damage buff so i'm gonna leave it b tier let me know what you guys think about that i'm sure there's a lot of people that swear by it but personally i don't really use it now everything that is left here are exotic i haven't really used too much so take it with a grain of salt like i know verity's brow is actually quite good i know a lot of people rate this very high so for example i'm gonna put this ah uh, i'm gonna put it in a tier above transversive steps. I'm gonna move Getaway Artist too because 
They're definitely way better than transversives in my opinion. Uh, Verity's Brow, I know a lot of people swear by Verity's Brow. Weapon, final blows, matching your subclass, give you death throws, which provides damage bonus and grenade energy. When you throw your grenade, nearby allies gain grenade regeneration for a short time. That is interesting. I know a lot of people swear by this. It basically gives you some really strong grenades, so I am going to put it pretty high up. I personally don't think I've ever used them because I thought it was mid. But based on what people have been saying, I'm going to have to give them a second chance. I am going to put it A tier because I know that the polls have been putting it pretty damn high. So that's where it's going to sit. Rain of Fire? Rain of Fire. Okay, so what it does is it reloads all of your weapons when you dodge with your Icarus Dash. Now that is pretty damn solid. It's similar to Marksman Dodge except on a way faster cooldown. Which is amazing with, you know, a rocket or something like that. It also gives you, it makes you radiant when you get final blows with fusion rifles and linear fusion rifles. Now that could be combined with Vex Mythoclast for a very oppressive set in PvP. I remember that was meta for quite a while there. It's not that good though. So I am going to have to put it, I think, I think low B tier is a good spot for it. You know, it's a bit situational. If you're in endgame activities, there are so many other exotics that you're going to want to use. The air dodge instantly reloading your rocket is nice, but that is not enough reason to run it. It would need to give you some type of damage buff to those fusion rifles, in my opinion. So I'm going to put it low B tier, but it's very solid. It's a very solid exotic. B tier is not bad at all. Now, I'm going to be honest. Boots of Assembler, I have completely written this exotic off. I don't even know what it does. So let's take a look at it one more time. Standing in a healing rift creates noble seekers that seek out allies not in your rift and it heals them. Standing in an empowering rift does the same thing but it gives your allies damage bonus. Each time a seeker finds your allies, your rift duration is extended while you're standing in it. It also provides airborne effectiveness to Lumina. So I assume, you know, you have a nice little build there where you have Lumina buffing your allies and so do the Boots of Assembler, but I have never seen anyone use Boots of Assembler, so there's no way it's that good. The tracking is probably bad, but I'm going to be honest, guys, I haven't personally used this in my life, so I don't know how good it is. You're going to have to let me know in the comments, but based on my knowledge of how meta they are, I'm going to have to put them... Ah... Uh, I'll put them above Starfire and Felwinters for sure. Uh, I'll put them above Luna Faction. I'm going to sit them right there, mid C tier. And that is going to be the tier list. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, be sure to subscribe as I post Destiny 2 videos every single day. Let me know if my takes are absolutely terrible in the comments. I am sure I'm going to be flamed down there because everyone has different opinions. They have different favorite exotics. I get it, bro. I'll take the hate. Appreciate y'all watch. I have a goal of hitting 10,000 subscribers by the end of the summer. And if everyone watching this subscribed, I could hit that by the end of the week, which would be so cool, guys. But either way, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for the next video. Peace.